Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today's September 1st. I'm going to go over nine crops that you can plant now. These crops are cool weather crops. They like the colder weather. They can take a pretty good frost. That's why I like recommending them in September. They can handle the cold weather. I'm in Maryland. You may have to adjust the timing a little bit depending on where you live. But these are nine beautiful crops that you can plant really in September and October, some places even November. They mature quickly, anywhere from 28 days, well, let's just say 25, 25 days from germination, all the way up to about 75 days for the peas. Going to go over the spacing. People like to know the exact distance for spacing seeds, and that can vary greatly. But I'm going to give you the spacing that I use for growing completely mature heads. Full-size heads of lettuce, pak choy, bok choy, um, romaine lettuce, arugula, etc. We're not going to do cut and come again greens. We're going to space them so that they get to full size. This bed was planted about five days ago. And you can see that, if you have a good eye, that's a radish coming up. Radish is coming up there. Because we're growing from the summer into the fall, cool weather crops planted this way for a second season in the fall of cool weather germinate really quickly so you don't really need to pay attention to the days to maturity on the back of the seed pack the ground is warm they germinate quickly they grow quickly September 1st is beautiful for Maryland for that cold weather coming what these cool weather crops like I want to go over those details because that's how you can figure out when to plant they like 45 degree nights 50 degree nights lower 60 degree nights 50 degrees soil temperature. They like days that are in the 60s or 70s. That's what I'm looking for now in Maryland. The heat is starting to break. The cold weather is rolling in. I'm going to give you the spacing in inches and centimeters, and you can see that I wrote it right on there. I also have a blog, The Rusted Garden Journal. Check that out. I'll have all the details there so you don't have to write things down. I wanted to cut in real quick because this video is going to be void of green growth because I really just wanted to go over the nine plants that do really well with frost and cold and then show you the spacing so that you can get full-size plants. The plants here went in on 8-5. Again, today is September 1st. The peas are doing pretty good. They're in a shadier area, so they were protected from the hot August sun. Cages have to go in to support them because they have hollow stems. The problems I'll be talking about shortly, snails and slugs came in here and really damaged the radishes here. That's a common problem because there's so much life going on with the warm season so you have to do you have to go ahead and treat that the romaine lettuce looks pretty good there's a lot of seeds planted in here these are all going to be dug up and transplanted to the same distance that i'm talking about in this video and then the pak choy grows extremely fast it was just way too hot august 5th it got leggy and they've all been eaten down by snails and slugs so you have to keep in mind protection of your cool crops going from summer into fall and really addressing any kind of pest issues. Here's a little tool. That space is two inches. Let's get the camera out of there. Two inches, five centimeters, up to the next line is four inches, six inches, 15 centimeters, all the way. That's just to give you a nice visual. Spacing between rows, I really space my rows somewhere between six and 12 inches. If you have a lot of pest pressure, insects, etc. You want greater spacing in a rose. That will help you be able to better manage them. And in the fall, I like to space my cool weather crops a little bit. I'd like to space them further apart than in the spring. In the spring, everything has been killed off or is hibernating and hasn't really come out yet. So I can plant things more closely together. I have less pest pressure. Now everything is up and about and running around. So snails and slugs, I recommend putting down slug bait to kill out the slugs right now. Do that about every two weeks. Any slug bait that has iron phosphate or sulfur in it really works well. I've already planted some of these for other videos. Snails and slugs have come and devastated them. So I know this was a little bit long. We'll get to the planting now. And at the end of the video, I'll show you how to prep the beds. We're just going to really use the soil that's present. If you want to amend it like I show you, that's fine. And we're going to use a water-soluble fertilizer. That water-soluble feed is going to be immediately available to the plants. So we're going to start here, mustard greens. It's a beautiful, cold-loving Asian green. 
you want to space them about six inches apart or 15 centimeters. And I have one, two, three, four in that row. My rows are going to be anywhere from, well, this is going to be upside down, but let's flip this around. So from the first line at that X all the way down here is about 12 inches. You don't really need to space anything more than 12 inches apart. That's plenty. So somewhere between 6 and 12 inches for your spacing between your rows. Arugula, delicious, nutty flavored, green, germinates in like three days going from summer to the fall. About 4 inches apart, 10 centimeters, and that'll be plenty of space for your arugula to form full-size heads are to grow to full size. We are not growing cut and come again greens. This is again full size. You can see the spacing right here real quick. One, two, it's about four inches. That's all you need to do. You don't have to be perfect either. If you're a little bit worried, space them a little bit more. Romaine lettuce, I highly recommend. I like a lettuce that can hold the dressing. Six inches apart, 15 centimeters. So we've got mustard greens, arugula, romaine, spinach, four centimeters apart. I've already dropped the seeds into all of these. Everything I'm talking about now, plant them about a quarter inch deep. But four inches, four inches, 10 centimeters apart for spinach. All of the seeds that you see me putting in now, I like to put in two or three seeds. You can thin down to one plant as they mature. You just, just don't want to drop one seed in doesn't germinate. Radishes, definitely three inches apart, you'll get nice large radishes, seven and a half centimeters, one of my favorite crops. Carrots can be planted much more closely together, two inches, five centimeters, and then pak choy or bok choy, wonderful Asian green, cabbage-like, nice head but not like a cabbage we typically grow, kind of a looser head. Delicious stalk, delicious leaves, give them about eight inches for them to get full size. All the plants you see here prefer the cooler temperatures. Some of these I tried growing two weeks ago, three weeks ago here in Maryland. It was just too warm. They bolted, they got beat up, the sun killed them off. So the timing's really important. You want to get these in the ground when the temperatures start to drop. Again, I'll show you the build, or I'll put the link in the video description, how you build this cage. Because we are sitting outside my garden now. That will keep the rabbits out the deer away from my seeds that I'm starting here. All right, we have two more. Now peas take from germination a good 75 days. The frost will actually damage the flowers and pods, but you can eat the tendrils. They're delicious. You can use them in salads. You want to space your peas about two inches apart, five centimeters, and I put in two seeds per hole. For your peas, you want to press them down a good half an inch to one inch deep that's perfect for peas. We're going to water everything in when we're done. That'll get them off to a great start. Because the heat is around, just make sure you're watering these every other day. You don't want your seedlings to dry out because the hot sun can kill them off. Keep them well watered. And then finally, we have turnips. I like the purple top turnips. You can plant them four inches apart, 10 centimeters. And again, from here to here is eight inches, and we got two inches four inches, six inches, eight inches. That's what I like to use for measuring. And if we take a look at the hole right there, the hole right there, that's about four inches apart. A lot of this I just do automatically, but I wanted to just give you some numbers that have been working for me for years for the general spacing. And then in between, so from the peas over here to the turnips, we have to here is about eight inches. So between crops or between rows, a good 6 to 12 inches really lets the air flow in. These are the nine crops that I recommend starting to grow in September, October. They can handle heavier frosts. Most of these plants do really well. It's not until a prolonged freeze comes that it actually freezes the top of the soil, you know, an inch deep, and then right where the roots meet the stalks of the plants, if that stays frozen for a long time, that's usually what kills off your plants. But you'd be surprised at how much abuse these plants can take with freezing. And as soon as, you know, it warms up, they thaw, they continue to grow. They have the ability to take the freeze and the cells of the plants 
don't rupture and therefore they stay intact and they can continue to grow. All right, so here's the basic setup for the soil if you want to amend it. If you don't want to spend the extra money or you're not making your own compost, you could just loosen the soil to a good, you know, four inches, six inches with your hand, shovel, however you want to do it, and then just plant the seeds. Remember, multiple seeds into a space, thin them down to the single plant that's the strongest. Except with peas, I like growing two plants per hole. They tend to do well that way. Bed prep for the fall should be simple. You've already got a lot of amendments in there from growing, you know, over the summer. So any bag product that's on sale, you know, manure or a compost, it's a combination of my own compost, beef grow, um, and actually a bag of manure that was on sale that I know the company bagged product-wise, I'm okay with it. Put in enough to raise the soil level, maybe by an inch, two inches, and I'm just going to kind of move this across, mix it in. At this point of the season, you can throw in some organic granular, I'll show you that, mix it in. It won't do so much for your plants that are going in now for the fall because it has to break down, but it'll be there next spring for your plants. I'll also link the video that shows you how to build this simple frame. These beds are outside my garden. This is going to keep deer, rabbits, squirrels, birds away for my fall crops that are coming up, and it's a pretty simple design. I'm just going to use bricks to raise it as the plants grow, and this will protect my plants that are growing in the fall. Quickly spread out the amendment that you're putting in. The whole goal is just to put in something nice that's going to hold moisture, has some nutrients in it. You don't have to spend a lot of money on it. Anything around your property is fine. If you want to throw in some organic granular, any brand works just as well. It's mostly the same ingredients. Just a quick scattering across that. The main feed for your fall crops is going to be a water-soluble fertilizer because the water-soluble ingredients is immediately available to your plant, which means is when you put in the nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, like in fish emulsion, I recommend AgroThrive. I'm affiliated with them. Check out the video description. As soon as you put that in there, the plants can use it as they grow. I'm just going to mix this into a depth of, I don't know, two to four inches. Just loosen everything up, mix it together, and that's going to be the bed that I plant my seeds into. This space is all you really need for a fall garden. If you want to subscribe and follow me, I'll show you how much we get out of this space. In some places, you know, I think I did maybe six or eight bok choy, 25 carrots, 25 radishes, maybe eight spinach plants. You don't have to overdo it. I do recommend maybe planting a little bit less if you're just getting started. This way you're not overwhelmed with all the care. I like to set up my planting really exactly like this. Put in the uh, labels. People always ask. These are shims, which are used for construction for like leveling doors and windows and stuff like that. I get them at Home Depot. But I like to put in the finger holes at the right distance and then just come in and cover up, you know, everything. Watering is going to be really important. Let's just give it, give a, it a spray. spray. You know, soak it down for a good 10, 15 seconds. When the seed swells from the water, that's when germination is going to start. And you really do want to keep up on the watering. You may have to water these every day. And something like this, you want that top inch or two to be soaked. And then the water, of course, goes down to the bottom or goes down to the lower levels of the soil. When your seed germinates, they send down a root and that root will get to that water but the top of the soil can really heat up to 90, 100, 110 degrees if you end up with a 95 degree day in September and that can damage your seedlings. Keep them watered. You could lay some shade cloth over here if you want to, different kind of things. Maryland, September 1st is really the time to get these cool weather crops going. Things should work out nicely over the next week or two. Temperatures are gonna be dropping, especially at night. That will cool the soil down. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my blog, The Rusted Garden Journal, for more information on these nine crops. This way you don't have to write everything down. You can just get the info from there. And please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. Thanks so much for watching.